I'm joined now by Najmul Hassan, uh, the Director of Financial Institutions Development Department for ICD. Mr Hassan, when was ICD established? Yeah, ICD was established in uh, November 1999, so it's about 15 years ago. And uh, this was set up uh, by the uh, Board of Directors of the IDB, which is the Islamic Development Bank. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, uh, 52 member countries who are, uh, you know, the shareholder of ICD. Uh, besides, obviously, IDB is there. And then we have five other financial institutions who are also, uh, you know, who have taken part of our equity. So we have, uh, this is like a, a, a multilateral development institution which actually uh, focuses on the private sector, uh, you know, in, in the member countries. Uh, you mentioned a number of uh, member states, uh, but in how many countries do you have for presence? Yeah, presently we have a presence uh, on uh, 42 countries, mm -hmm. and uh, out of this, MENA, which is the Middle East and North Africa, this is where we have a significantly high exposure, nearly about 44% of our total investment. And then this is followed by Central Asia, where we have around 20%, and then we have Asia, which is around 13%, uh, uh, and then Africa, which is around 10% or so. Mm -hmm. So the biggest of the chunk comes in from the Middle East and African, you know, North African side, yeah. How many projects have you financed since then? Since inception, we, are, we have uh, financed uh, over 270 projects, uh, it, and the amount of that would be the approval is uh, closing to, I think it's more than 3 billion US dollars. Uh, out of this, 70% of our financing is in equity, and the balance is in term finance and line of finance that we have given to various financial institutions in the member country. And so, which is which would you say is your biggest market? Uh, biggest market, uh, because you know we have a presence in, in, in the Middle East, so therefore obviously Middle East is a market which is growing very rapidly. So this is, Middle East is the biggest market for us right now. Uh, but after Middle East, then we also have North Africa and then uh, Central Asia, which is now becoming, you know, taking a significant share of what we are investing. So our future investments are more directed towards the Central Asian market and also towards uh, Africa, particularly the west part of the Africa, the Western African side. Yeah. In which countries uh, is the private sector now generating more jobs than those areas controlled by the government, or, or rather faster than the government? Really, it's uh, the mature markets. Uh, if you look at uh, markets like uh, we have uh, in Malaysia, uh, that's where you see there's been a significant, uh, you know, uh, interventions in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And now Indonesia is catching up with them. But uh, Malaysia has a, ma a lead. You know, they almost like have 50 percent of the Islamic banking market right now. So Indonesia is catching up, but it's more focused on uh, the size of this markets are so large that there is an economy of scale, and as a result, there are you know the number of people over there, and then they have also reached to a level of maturity vis-a-vis -vis the financial sector. So that's these are the markets which are really generating uh, you know much better in in terms of uh, providing job opportunities for people. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know the answer to this, but. Which member country has the best regulatory system for Islamic finance and the capital markets? Again, you know, Malaysia has an edge over everyone because mm -hmm. Malaysia, they were the pioneers as far as uh, Islamic finance was concerned. They took the right steps and then since then they have a very robust uh, central bank, uh, Bank Negara, which is, you know, making all the policies which are supportive of uh, sort of, you know, this new Islamic finance uh, business that is there. They have a very comprehensive legal system also because coupled with the banking system, you need to have a strong legal system which understands the differences between contracts. You know, when you say the Sharia contracts that we do, so these, has, at some point in time, they do get tested out in the market. At that time, how would the court react to them? Would they really understand the pr governing principles that were used in doing a Sharia product? So I think this is where Malaysia has taken a lead that not only do they have a comprehensive banking regulation, but also in form of, uh, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the legal side, you know, they have introduced reforms where uh, it, for, their, for them they have trained their courts in the sense that they understand the, the difference between the conventional products that are being used and the Islamic products that are, that are coming in and introduced in the market. And, and which uh, member country has set up an Islamic finance ecosystem that's worth emulating? 
I think here too, we, although some countries are catching up on this, but Malaysia has the leads. Uh, no, no, no real. Uh, there are no real uh, seconds to that because Malaysia, there is, like I said, you know, in form of regulatory, they they are well ahead of everyone. They have a exceptional support by their by their government uh, to to support Islamic finance. I think, and this is one of the key things that we have seen. You know, we we operate in so many different markets that you can have you can have an Islamic financial institution literally in any market because there'll always be a, a group of people, you know, the low hanging fruits and uh, you, so you will have. But where does it really grow? It grows into con in, in countries, that's what we our uh, experience has been, that it grows in countries where you have a regulator and government which is strongly supporting it. And that is, you know, the example that we see in Malaysia and now also to a certain extent in Maldives that here the central banks and the government, uh, you know, the Ministry of Finance has taken upon themselves that they would provide this alternate channels. So they make the environment or level playing field vis-a-vis -vis Islamic banks or financial institution and conventional bank, and that helps them to take off. Otherwise, you know, you're always sort of figuring, figuring out the differences in, in uh, the treat, tax treatment of, you know, various products, the stamp duties that are applicable on various things. So I think this way we've seen Malaysia has taken a lead and then their government has gone and supported it in a, in a very strong way and it has taken off. In countries where it isn't, it's, you know, Islamic banking is existing, but it's really existing at the periphery of the society. It's really not come into the mainstream. So banks will be there. They survive for some time. They will make you know, profit, but it doesn't really become the core business, as yeah. you say. Yeah. You've mentioned Malaysia uh, in several times already. Um, but where do you think the most potential lies? Uh, yes, I think North Africa has a very strong uh, potential, uh, the North African market. But the only issue that uh, in North Africa is that you find countries are in various stages of development. So you have uh, markets like Tunisia and uh, Egypt, where the private sector is well developed, and you know you can do intervention through the private sector. But then there are the markets like Algeria and Libya, which are really coming up, uh, you know, up the curve. So there, it is going to take a certain amount of time. And then we have the Sub-Sahara Africa, which is still in its you know, early stages of infancy. So uh, North Africa, you really can't just, it's not just one size fit all. So you have to have specific strategy for each of the market by looking at where they are vis-a-vis -vis the private sector development. And finally, which, which member country has made the best use of the facilities that are offered by ICD? Now here we, we do have a challenge because in mature markets it's difficult to penetrate them. So you know obviously we would like to say uh, you know we would have been having a presence in Turkey or in Malaysia or in Indonesia, but here you find that to a certain extent this is no longer new. It's you know signing banking products are like a commodity like any other financial product. So uh, the real difference that we have made, I think it's in West Africa. I would say because we have four banks over there. We have a bank in Senegal, in Mauritania, in Niger, in, in Guinea. And under this, we have an umbrella, which we have a holding company called Tamwil, uh, through which we are operating. And here we have seen that Islamic banking has made a major difference. The other one is a very small market, which is in Maldives, uh, which is mm -hmm. about 300,000 people. Yeah. But now nearly uh, almost like 30,000 of those are our customers. So, you know, as a percentage wise, it has made a significant mm -hmm. difference that a lot of people who up till now were not in the financial sector, you know, they were not mm -hmm. really doing banking because of their faith reason. By providing their, them an alternate, they have now come into the banking sector. So from a percentage, percentage point of view, these, are, these, these may be small markets the Central uh, African markets or Maldives and all that. But from the point of view of as a percentage, I think they have made a significant difference. Mr. Hassan from ICT, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.